All right, Dallas-Fort Worth. I am Anthony Cernelia with Ask the Experts Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. Once again, we have our expert plumber, Roger, in here from Texas Dream Plumbing. He is interviewing Mr. David Johnson of Plumber's Choice Water. They have an interesting conversation going on here. And if you've just joined us, you can call us at 214 or 817-787-1190. That's 214 or 817-787-1190. All right, Roger, David, you know, I don't want to interrupt and... But y'all need to get back into this because I'm learning a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, okay, so a while ago we talked about chlorine and chloramine, and we understand why it's in the water, but is it bad for us as humans? Well, analogy I like to use when we're talking about chlorine or chloramine is a banana peel, right? You never eat a whole banana, including the peel. The peel is designed to protect the fruit until it's ready for consumption. But when you're ready to eat it, you want to remove it because it's something that simply doesn't taste good or smell good and, and could potentially be not good for you. Right. Um, there really is nothing harmful, the amount of chlorine that they're actually adding to the water supply. It has more effect on your plumbing stuff, dries out your skin, could dry out your hair. I got to talk about my wife got pretty dry skin, right? And once we got a carbon filter, literally she was cutting down the lotion that she had to use, literally about 50%. You know, it's one of those things. So, um, it has done its job. You want to get rid of it. But obviously, our municipalities have to do it. I'm, I'm grateful that we live here in the United States, right? We've got good, clean Safe water. Safe water all Safe the time. Safe water, absolutely. Safe Water Act, thank God. You know, our municipalities do the best they can with the dollars that are allocated, right? And they do a great job of providing great water for us. It can just be taken to a better level once it gets to your house. I, I will tell you this, and I, I don't know that you and I have really got to talk much since we've installed mine. My wife gets her hair colored. Mm-hmm. Uh, not because she's getting old. It's because she just, you know, she prefers a little lighter color hair. Right. And when she went back to her hairstylist, her hairstylist says, oh, my God, I do not know what you're doing, but keep doing it. Now, she didn't change her product. Those of y'all that don't know, I used to be a professional hairstylist. I, I buy <laughs> Anthony, Anthony, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, back the truck up. What are you styling? Up. Hold on. What are you styling? Back the truck up. I used to be a professional hairstylist. My my mom, she worked for uh, Paul Mitchell. She was a national trainer. So I I, I, I do commend you on your hairstyle. <laughs> I, but, I actually uh, went to Renee's Cosmetology Center in Dallas, which is no longer there. Okay. Uh, I worked at Michael's Motorcycle in Highland Park, which is, I don't think, any longer there. Okay. But, yeah. And I used to have used to work for my sister, Sabra Wakefield, used to be a great hairstylist up north. That's awesome. And worked for her. And then I opened my own salon in a health club. So... I'm very familiar with, you know. Man, you're an A to Z guy. I'm just saying. It it is what it is. I've done a little bit of all of it. But we use professional hair products at home, even though I don't have much hair. (laughs) Anthony, come on. See, you you keep messing me up, brother. So anyway, we use good products, and the product didn't change. But once we installed the water filtration Mm -hmm. system, she went back, and her her hairstylist that colors her hair, and Yes, I still cut it sometimes, but I don't color it, do anything that anymore. Right. Her stylist is like, oh, my God, whatever you're doing, your hair looks great. Right. And so what is it that the chlorine does to well, women's think, bodies Think about and chlorine and chlorine bleach. I mean, it's that's what we're adding to the water supply, you know. So get rid of it. It's done its job and dries out your skin and what have you. And uh, it, another thing, the problem that we have, actually, when we're adding chlorine to the water supply to kill the bacteria and virus, it interacts with organic material. Okay, there's always dissolved organics in water. Leaves, branches, moss, fish, sewage, obviously, is sent back into the system. And it's, and it's allowed, it, they're allowed a certain amount of that. It, it, it's, the reality is, is, like I said, they do the best. I and mean, we think about the Dallas market, what do you got, five, six, seven million people? Seven and a half million. Eight, eight and a half. Yeah, eight, it's almost eight and a yeah. half million people. Okay, the average person uses 80, waters, 80 gallons of water a day. So, I mean, you do the math, 8 million plus 80 gallons of water. I mean, they got a vast job to do. So they're, if, doing, they're doing the best they can. If you'll contact Texas Green Plumbing, <laughs> we can teach you how to save water and conserve water so you won't use that much. <laughs> exactly right. There's a big banner right behind us, 12 million, 12.5 million gallons of water a day. And um, I don't know if you've seen Lake Ray Hubbard. It's huge, but that's enough to fill it twice. Wow. That's a lot of water. A lot of water, absolutely. So uh most municipalities only required the safe water drinking house test for 214 things mm-hmm. it's 84,000 different things that are soluble in water 
right? So a lot of them aren't even tested for under the Safe Water Drinking Act. So is that uh, is that good? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, <laughs> that seems a little lopsided. Depends on me. what you call good. <laughs> exactly. Fair enough. I mean, once again, you know, if y'all are just now joining us, we have our expert plumber, and he's speaking with David Johnson of Plumber's Choice Water, and they are talking whole water filtration systems. Um, if you want to get a hold of David, it's 615-866-6100 or Roger, 972-442-4101. I just want to get your number out there just in case anybody's joining us right now, guys. But, wow. You know, my father, he's probably listening to the show right now, and he's probably going to give you a call right after the show. But <laughs> So, I mean, it's whole house. Can, let me ask you a question. Like, people that live in apartments, can they do a whole system for their apartment? So, very good question. Uh, you have to, for a whole house carbon filter, you got to have your own cold water main line. So if you're in an apartment, that's generally, you know, you're tied in with all the other apartments there. But what I do recommend, and you can simply go down to your Home Depot or Lowe's, and you can get a, a block carbon shower head. They're about 50 60 bucks. You can find them online, and it's a great solution just for shower water uh, because you are that big sponge. And then, obviously, you can get point-of-use systems. You can put a system right down below, you know, the kitchen sink. Uh, there's some high-flow systems out there now. You can do a gallon and a half per minute goes right on your cold water supply at the kitchen sink so you can have good cooking water you know cleaning water you know drinking water right from the tap you know here in dallas i actually live right down the street at a condo and we have a hoa because they're individually owned so we could actually tap into the cold water supply on ours yeah just because they're individually owned and most think everybody would sign up exactly right most condos though are going to have their own cold water and hot water when we're dealing with condos unless it's a it depends on how it's all built out but a lot of cold uh, a lot of condos have their own cold and hot water we're dealing with apartments. Really, you got to do it yourself. You know? Okay. And, and in the condos too, Anthony, they've normally got their own water supply line. We've installed these outside. We've buried them in the ground. We've got display rocks. There's, there's different things that we've done. So we have installed them in those type of situations. Absolutely. Apartments a little bit different. Do you have a big enough system for a? Oh, absolutely. Three inch water supply for a apartment complex if they wanted that? Absolutely. You know, we, we any size, residential, commercial, industrial, we've done them on apartment complexes, big condo, high rises, uh, pretty much anything that you can think of. People get, need good, clean water, we can absolutely help. What about like a workout center, like 24-hour fitness? Oh, yeah. You know, they, they should have them on all theirs, you know? I mean, they're talking health, you know? Let's absolutely. See. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, exactly right. So carbon filtration. And, and you talked about like the carbon in the shower head, and I know that the Brita units use carbon in them. Right. Are there different kind of carbons? And if so, what's good about them or what's bad about them? And what I know they're an absorber, but what what all is the big difference? Yeah, uh, not all carbon is created equal anymore. So uh, we actually use Calgon as our manufacturer, um, and we like to use Centaur carbon. Uh, which is a catalytic carbon. The Centaur is the brand name that we use because it's much quicker at breaking down that chlorine and ammonia bond. It's literally three times quicker than standard carbon is. So in all of our chloramine markets, we recommend the CX or our Flotec Pure Filter, uh, which is really going to attack that chloramine, break down that bond to, to basically remove the chlorine aspect of it. So um, absolutely. You can, you know, the system literally is about a third the size Versus having standard carbon in it. So it's a very good value. It's going to last a very long time, and it's going to do a great job for your home. Okay, so you said the CX system. Well, you've got a CX and a CS. What's the yeah. difference in them, and what would be someone's reason for wanting one over the other? Yeah, the CX is going to be our catalytic carbon system. The CS is going to be standard carbon. Because not all municipal. it's a little bit more expensive with the catalytic carbon. Okay. Uh, it's not significant, but it's a little bit more expensive. So... Uh, if your market is using chloramine, they're going to want to use the CX because it's going to be do a much better job at removing that. Or if, or if you're out in California, Iowa, and Wisconsin, I can only say reduces. Uh, but uh, it's going to do a great job here in the Dallas market of removing that chlorine and chloramine. Good Quick deal. question. Um, when you do remove that, does that higher the alkaline? Is that how that works? No. With carbon filtration, there really is no pH change at all, which is, which is a good thing. Uh, Water is going to be neutral at 7%. It uh, starts to become acidic if it's a little bit lower than 7 or, or a lot lower, and then it's going to be more alkaline, anything higher than 7. But there is no pH change uh, when we're dealing with carbon filtration. And another thing is a lot of people think fluoride is removed with carbon. It is not. Okay, big misconception there. And there are special filtration systems just for fluoride, but you've got to change those every four to six months or something, don't you? It, it all depends on what you're putting in. But uh, you but don't want to remove the fluoride, right? I mean, or yeah, do it you? depends. You know, I mean, fluoride was used in World War II in concentration camps as a gas to keep people docile. I mean, but 
Uh, I personally don't think that the amount of fluoride, you're adding about uh, 0.57 parts per million here in the Dallas market. I don't think that's very harmful. It's good for our teeth, good for dental nature. Uh, but there's some people I think it's government overreach. If they want to get rid of it, the best solution there is going to be a reverse osmosis system. Uh, fluoride's not very dermal. It's not easily absorbed through the skin. So in most cases, you're getting it from the water by drinking it through consumption. So uh, generally, I recommend a reverse osmosis for drinking water if you want to get rid of fluoride. They do make a bone char filter as well, which is literally charred cow bone. Uh, it's called bone char that the water goes through to, to remove fluoride. I don't sell very many of those. <laughs> Just haven't had the demand. I think it kind of freaks people out that all the water that they're consuming or bathing is going through bone char. So this takes care of chlorine, chloramine, a lot of other filters, or not Herbicides, fluoride. Mm-hmm. pesticides, industrial solvents, pretty much all the Fecal matter. Not fecal matter. Not, not bacteria and virus. But the, the city obviously had so much chlorine and chloramine that, that we do not have that particular right. problem. Right. So. So we've also got hard water problems here in Dallas. And I know that this doesn't do anything really about the hard water, but I do know that you do have a product that does. And we're going to talk about that more in a minute, yeah. but installing these together, and we've, we've talked about, you know, particles and impurities in the water lines, installing these together, can they really help somebody's plumbing system uh, well, that much? One thing I th- really think we should address first is, is a huge misconception. A lot of people think water softeners are water filters. They are not. Okay, water softeners do a great job at completely removing calcium and magnesium if it's working properly. Right. Okay, they also remove a little bit of iron. Uh, more of an issue you're going to have on a well water versus city water. But carbon, really you need a combination of them both, or you need to do something uh, like physical water treatment, which we're going to discuss in just a couple minutes on, on addressing mineral in the house. Uh, but their carbon filtration just knows one thing, water softeners do a completely different thing. And we don't necessarily need to remove the calcium and magnesium, but we will talk about that more in a minute. And yes, we will. All right, it, you know, if you're just joining us, we are interviewing Roger Wakefield of Texas Green Plumbing, and he is interviewing David Johnson of Plumber's Choice Water. If you'd like to get a hold of either, Roger's phone number is going to be 972-442-4101. He's our expert plumber. If you'd like a whole house water filtration system, it's Plumber's Choice Water, and that's David Johnson at 615-866-6100. TexasGreenPlumbing.com on the World Wide Web or Plumber'sChoiceWater.com on the World Wide Web. We are Ask the Experts Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. Dallas-Fort Worth, stay with us. We'll be right back in two to three minutes. 